but my end goal really was to make a World Cup qualifying team. And um, so that I knew the Gold Cup was a big step. So I was kind of just excited to, to go out there. And obviously, after Gold Cup was the next qualifying. So you're you're kind of playing to win the tournament, but you're also playing for a spot on the the qualifying team. So for me, it was kind of like, yeah, this is the men's national team, but this is also uh, another step for me to to make it where I want to be. You went from Kansas City to Italy. How would you describe the day when you found out that it was official and you were going to Syria? You know, kind of when it first started happening, and you know, at the end, I talked to you know Peter at the time and told him, "Okay, like, hey, this is what I want to do. You know, I want to try to go to the Serie A right now." And obviously, he agreed. So, throughout that whole week, I was kind of just building up to slowly each day. I was kind of thinking about it more and more that. I mean, you know, I'm going to have to move and, and play in the Serie A. And then uh, uh, eventually it, it kind of just hit me when I was more of on, on a plane, really, all the build up And, you know, obviously the contract was settled, everything. But, you know, when I'm on the plane, my family going to sign, that's when I was like, oh, you know, I'm actually, I'm actually doing this for real. You know, there's no going back. Now, on the day that you said goodbye to Kansas City, there was some issue with your car and a prank and Johnny Russell. Can you kind of walk me through that story? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the video <laughs> shows a lot, but, um, yeah, so obviously I, I got back from Gold Cup and, you know, I had to come in and get my stuff from the facility and, you know, say my goodbyes, and, uh, they were leaving to play, I think, Seattle away, so it was, it was a really quick turnaround, so, yeah, I came in and, you know, I, I'm not going to say I, it was my fault, but I definitely started it. I sent, I sent Johnny a video of me walking past his car and just giving it a little kick, you know, friendly kick. And then, uh, so yeah, we go. In, I go inside, and you know, we say goodbyes and everything. And then I get a video from Daniel, and you know, it's Johnny. <laughs> it's Johnny recording, or Johnny's like, oh, goodbye, boost and stuff. And he walks on the car, and I think you know what happens next. And then, and then I, I see the video, and, and the next thing, Daniel comes running in, like, oh, come here, come here, you gotta look at your car. <laughs> and I mean, I wasn't too mad. I was like, I'm leaving the car here. We'll fix it tomorrow. I'll, you know, and he gave me his pretty nice car to drive for the last couple of days I was there. So I was I was happy with how it turned out. Really. Worked out okay. Yeah. Now, are you, was that a specific thing with him or are you like a prankster in general? Like, do you enjoy that kind of part of, you know, being a teammate? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a prankster, but with him, I definitely, he definitely pulled it out of me, I would say. I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a full-on prankster. I don't pull many pranks, but I definitely like to joke around with my teammates a lot, especially the ones in KC. I was around them for, you know, five or six years. So we were pretty much you know, brothers, so them it was pretty easy to make jokes with, but Johnny, I would say, was the only one where I'd pull, actually try to pull pranks on him, because he was the main one who was doing it to us, so everybody tried to pull pranks on him. So now you're playing in Venice, you know, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. What's it like to live in a city that, for most Americans, they know it only as, like, you know, a tourist place or a place they've, you know, seen in movies? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I think, uh, like I said, I live outside of Venice, so I'm, like, a 10-minute drive away, but just having that that city, you know, 10 minutes away from me when I'm bored or something or have an off day, it's not, you know, I have to, you know, it's not America like, uh, or Kansas isn't as beautiful as Venice, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, I can just, just drive into the city and, you know, just spend my day there and sit around and, you know, have a lunch at a, in the middle of the city and it's beautiful. So it's, uh, it's definitely different for me that I get to see that and I'm lucky enough to, to have that to, on my free time. I had read when you guys go to home games, you take a, a boat yeah. to the stadium. Is that true? Yes, very true. Every every home game, <laughs> we live outside the city. We don't. A lot of us don't live in Venice. We live in Mesla. It's a small city, and there's like a kind of this boat place where all the kind of boats take kind of like a taxi area. But you know, all the boats dock there and, and take off and go wherever you you tell them to. So. The team sets up a, a bigger boat and, you know, we all meet there at a certain time, all the players, just like you're arriving for a team bus, you know, you wait there and instead of a bus, it's a boat. So you get there and it just, uh, you, you drive to the stadium, it's kind of on a smaller island right outside of uh, Venice. When you first heard that this is how you go to games, I mean, what did you think? Like, obviously that's a very different experience than sort of getting on the bus and going to Orlando Stadium. Yeah, I think now I'm used to it because it's, it's normal. But at the start, I, I didn't know it was true. You know, I was kind of like, we really take a boat. Like, I've heard it. I've heard people say it, but I didn't think, I thought maybe you just take a small boat to the bus or something. But no, you take the boat, you know, to the stadium. So um, it, was, it was weird, but honestly, it wasn't, it wasn't that different than a bus. It's just like, you know, obviously you look out and you're on the water, but it wasn't that different, you know, it's... It's a nice boat, you have a nice area and you get there within 10 minutes, so it's uh, nothing different really. In your opinion, what's the strongest part of your game? 
Uh, I think my calmness, really. I think I, I play kind of very cool. I like the ball a lot on my feet, so, you know, it's you can give it to me, and I'll, I'll keep the game going and keep the game flowing, and that's what I like to do. Um, you know, any team I play on, I try to just connect the game, you know, from the back line to the front line, really. When you look at this group, it's a group of young players. It's a group of guys that can play lots of different positions. How do you see yourself fitting in best on this roster? Where do you think you can help this team the most? I, I think I'm a midfielder all in all. You know, I've played there my whole life. So obviously we have, you know, key players in the midfield, Tyler, Weston, and, you know, Eunice. It's the, that's probably one, our strongest part of the team also. And, and, you know, I think we have a lot of good midfielders, so it's a tough position to, to get into. But, you know, we're all, we're all here to support each other and push each other and, you know, compete in training. And that's how you make, that's how the best teams in the world, you know, in the country, everybody is, that's what they do is they push each other and they have, backups who are pushing for starting spots so for me I think it's just me being there and, and ready for the time and you know if they're they're playing well and they're supporting them and if they're injured if they're you know tired I'm there to try to step in for them so uh, yeah it's all you know healthy and it's a, a good good group we have so I'm just waiting for my chance. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.